Hello everyone, um, I hope you can all hear me and uh, I'd like to wait for another minute to see if there's any uh, more members joining. I know Andre will be late. Okay, so let's start. Um, so I'd like to confirm, as usual, who's at the call at the moment. Um, I see Alan from Athlonic, Greg from Athenic, Michael from Aaron, Marani from Wright, uh, Paul from Wright. So these are all the team members that I see. I know Tom, John Sweetie will be joining um, also shortly. And um, yeah, great, John, I, I see you now. So, um, and uh, I see, um, uh, a couple of people joining us from the NR Secretariat and I also see her man um, here. So um, let's go to confirm the agenda and uh, my apologies that it was shared on just about an hour before the call uh, due to my own um, 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 transporting. Um, so if it is not available on the screen at the moment, um, May I ask people to either refer to the Christy mailing list um, or the, the global IANA mailing list where I have um, shared the draft agenda for the 12th Christy um, Christ teleconference. So the title says um, draft agenda for 12 um, Christy teleconferences. So, <coughs> so in addition to the usual agenda, which is um, review of action items, um, I'd like to confirm um, discussion status um, of the each RIR region and globalist, and note that we've already um, closed the, the comment period. And um, I was generally, I don't observe any notable um, comments after our last call. And then I'd like to, um, so that's something that I'd like to cover in agenda item number three. Um, and then um, as agenda item number four, um, I'd like to um, confirm the status of editorial suggestions, which um, um, Michael, Alan, and Bill has been working on, and it has been shared on the group team mailing list. So thanks to all the work. And I'd like to also confirm um, our position about all suggested changes, and then confirm about the timeline to work on the editorial suggestions. So that's what I'd like to cover for agenda item number four. And um, for agenda item number five, I'd like to confirm status of um, uh, uh, sorry, um, status of um, edit or uh, text suggestions. That might that may have been a better wording um, of the substantial changes which we so far we have um, three points um, and we'll go through each of them. Um, later. And then um, I'd like to uh, confirm Christine's position for new issues that are being raised. I don't see any substantial issues that needs to be discussed, but just uh, making sure that we're clear on, on our position on all the issues that have been raised since the last call. And then I'd like to finally, as agenda item number seven, um, confirm timeline and how we work for the final submission. So confirm the schedule and who does what, what. So that's basically what I would like to cover in the agenda today. And um, I hope you were able to find the 
the emails that I sent, and uh, while it's not um, shown on the screen here, you are able to um, to follow the words um, of the agenda that I sent. So, is there um anything else that you would like to add? Um, so it seems Nuani seems to keep losing audio. Okay, noted that she'll be back again. So um, let's first um, go and review all our action items first. So um, confirm the status of our minutes. So um, I think Loriana has um, shared the excellent notes for the 10th Christine call. And um, it, it was uh, my, my feedback was after the 24 hours, so it may not be still available on the website. Um, and my understanding is we're, we're still waiting for the minutes for the ninth call. Um, uh, let me know if I missed the confirmation. Um, and then um, the 11th call, which was the, the last call we had yesterday. Um, is there anything you would like to add from um, APNIC secretary, um, the NRO secretariat about this? The status of the minutes? Uh, the minutes from the 10th meeting will be published shortly, and we are working on the 9th and the 11th. We will send them to the CRISP mailing list as soon as possible. Thank you very much, Loriano. And I would like to thank you again for all the work that you, you're doing in this uh, very short, intense uh, period. Thank you. And um, and our CRISP website improvement. Um, my understanding of the status is that um, a man has, um, I, I have uh, been requested from um, in our secretariat to list all the um, suggested improvements. So what I've done is list the improvements that have been on shared on the CRISP team mailing list and then leaving it for the NRO secretariat to work on um, and make the decision on what point to incorporate uh, based on the resources available. Um, so I hope this is clear and the basic idea is we're not forcing an our secretariat to incorporate all the points. Um, so it's, it's fine for you to um, work on what you can based on the available resources. So the only two points I would like to highlight is one, um, the revised description of the CRISP mailing list. It says today that uh, it's a closed mailing list. I would like to not use the word closed. And um, this is the part that I seem to have a little bit different understanding is um, the, the Excel file of um, the Christine issue status does not seem to be up to date from my environment. It doesn't show the status of Christine. Um, it doesn't show the Christine status. So um, I don't know if it's just my environment, but I would appreciate it if um, someone from the Secretariat, Secretariat could just double check. I'll certainly uh, resend the latest file again to make sure you know what's not up to date. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, or any um, comment or questions from the NRO Secretariat on uh, working on this? Not seeing any um, comments. So let's move on. Um, so HTML and text version, I, I believe this is already incorporated. And metadata in docs, well, I believe this is already, again, addressed by uh, Michael. Um, so if there's no other comments related to actions review, let's go to um, confirm um, discussion status both on the regional list and the global list. And um, if there's anything um, that is raised in the regional list, it would be great if we could raise it. But uh, no need to share um, unless there, there's anything notable. And in the global list, I, I see additional comments um, which I have actually um, covered in um, agenda item six. Um, on each of the issues, which are um, continued discussions in RIR meetings, um, consistency in description in IPR in um, between se different sections. Um, there's a comment from Pim Jo Wong, which I sort of wasn't totally sure about his intention, and um, would like to also confirm with what the first team members think. And then um, there's been further input about cost. So that's what I'm observing from the mailing list, and I'm not seeing any further feedback on 
um, from Richard Hill, who seemed to have some issues related to um, the details of the SLA. So I, I'm not um, seeing too much of substantial issues. Um, um, Dr. Coppin, I'm, I'm not sure if you wanted to speak or um, and um, if you're not, um, it would be great if you're able to um, to um, close down your sound. Thank you very much. And um, uh, uh, Izumi, I'm Dr. Govind here. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, did you want to speak? No, no, no. I'm oh, all right. Okay. Um, thank. Great. Um, great to have you at the call. Um, so, um, hello. And um. And then also, so is there any other substantial issues that you observe from either the global list or the regional list? We'll cover the polls uh, suggestion um, as well. So I'm not hearing any um, additional comments uh, on this. So I assume that I've, I've um, prop, uh, actually captured what's been um, raised. So let me then move on to um, editorial suggestions. So, um, confirm the status of work from um, Alan, Michael, and Bill, and then I'd like to confirm what we're going to do about all suggested changes. So, first, uh, would uh, either one of you be able to share the latest um, status and any anything you would like to highlight uh, with the team? Yes, hi, Zumi. Um I can give just a quick status, and then I know that there might be a couple items that we need to uh, chat about. But um, essentially what uh, we had done is Alan did a, a good job of, of incorporating his comments, and I believe Muendo's comments. Um, I also took uh, the ones that I had made, as well as um, the list of uh, items that you had provided to us, you know, like Andres's comment and Pinder's. Um, I'm trying to come up with the whole list now, yours, Izumi's. Uh, I think Niles and, of course, the one more substantive one is Paul Wilson's as well. And then I know that uh, after that, Bill Woodcock went and uh, incorporated some of his comments as well as uh, trying to um, clean up the draft a little bit. So uh, I believe that you all probably have seen the email traffic in the within the past hour. Um, Alan has done a um, good job of identifying some of the items in uh, – in the current draft that we may have to revert back just for consistency's sake. Um, and I comment on that as well, and I think a couple of other use, uh, other um, members have done so as well. So um, right now, that is where that stands. Um, I think that we can make some of those changes depending on what uh, we discuss here at the call. And then uh, if anybody has any questions about, uh, if anybody has any questions about specific changes, um, please let me know. Um, thank you, Michael, and I see hand from Alan, and maybe it would be helpful if there's any controversial part that you actually had um, um, you know, had to consider and uh, would like to confirm Christine's uh, opinion, it would be helpful if you could highlight. But uh, let me first go to Alan. Okay. Uh, thanks, Izumi. Um, I want to mention that um, in the edits that I submitted to Michael, I did not include some of the changes that I had talked about on the mailing list. Uh, specifically, I did not include the changes from uh, saying that the NROEC will do certain things to saying that the RIRs will do certain things. Um, I thought that was a substantive change rather than an editorial change, so I did not make it. Um, and also, it, uh, my suggestion to add a section at the beginning of the the doctors also not on the advantage of doing a transaction and gone through Woody and and been sent to the crisp mailing list. Um, I, I have made those changes in separate rounds of editing, but they're not in the latest version that you might have from Woody. Noted, and I think that makes sense. That it gives chance for people to give comment on your your other part, which you you considered as uh, um, more substantive than um, 
perhaps simply editorial. So I think we can give chance for people to give comments on that, and if people have no issues, we can incorporate in in, in the version that we'll be publishing. And uh, in a second thing, what is the so um. Um, Dr. Govin, it seems that we keep on hearing your sound. Um, I, I would appreciate it if you could unmute. Thank you very much. Um, and so if there's no further comments or questions related to the editorial um, changes, then um, I would like to go on to confirm the schedule, uh, how we would uh, work on this, um, the next schedule. So I did um, send um, on the Christine mailing list um, the timeline of the, the uh, suggested schedule that I have, it's just a, a very much tentative, um, so it's not fixed or anything. But, um, so um, I'd like to first confirm if you would like to, um, to um, publish this editorial version first as a separate timing from the final version, which is my current understanding. So we would actually publish it maybe, for example, a day before or a little bit earlier than the final version. And the idea is that this is the, um, the editorial version of the second draft, as we, we did the same thing for, um, for the first draft. Um, so does anyone have comments about this approach? And from Alan. Right, thanks. Um, I think it would be very useful to publish this draft. Um, it, it, you know, because I think we're going to be using this draft as a basis for making substantive changes. We should publish it for the community. However, I don't think it's quite ready for publication immediately. Um, perhaps we can get it ready in the next few hours. Um, you know, there, um, I think there, there have been some comments on the, the suggestions that I made in my pass through the document. Now, maybe we don't need to address them. Perhaps we could just publish it with a, a note saying it's still a work in progress. Don't assume that it's final, um, but we have made some changes. Um, if we do that, then I think we could publish it right now. Um, as long as we make a decision about the numbering. Um, personally, I prefer the, the Oh, thank you, Alan. Um, I, I, um, I think before I agree with the observation, we're not quite ready to publish it immediately. And there's a couple of things that we would like to um, confirm, including what we're going to do about incorporating our Paul Wilson's uh, suggested changes. So it may be safe that we, we give a little bit more time and not immediately um, after the call. And um, I noted about our numbering. I see a couple of people um, raising hands. So let me first go um, to those people um, who have raised hands. Um, I think I first see Nuran, and then I'll certainly cover about the numbering. Thank you, Zumi. Uh, apologies, my audio seems to be cutting out uh, all the time. So I've missed about 40 percent of the discussion so far. So uh, apologies if what I say contradicts what Alan just said or, or um, but about um, just a, a few very quick comments. I would not be particularly uh, comfortable publishing anything right now uh, as we have just received 
uh, a new document and I would like to get enough time to review that and uh, and have a clear idea about what has been incorporated and, and what hasn't. Um, then I also think um, I'm not sure what the status is with the Paul Wilson's last minute changes, but I'll just make a quick comment that non controversial, simply editorial suggestions. I think that can be incorporated without the need for any discussion. If, if it there are controversial. I just uh, think that they are more than editorial. Um, and I saw that Izumi asked for the way forward there. And uh, I'd be happy to review some of those things and quickly go through them if we have the time. I realize that we're also running on a very short timeline. And I think, uh, just a final word, I think we, we need to make sure, I think it's good to I'll try to connect back in again. Um, yes. So I I would like to wait for um, Nurani until we, we go for um, substantive um, discussions actually, because this is the part the part that um, that covers Paul Wilson's suggested changes is. Um, the approach that was um, shared by Nurani, and so I, I want to confirm until Nurani is back. And um, but um, and I see our hand from Craig. So Craig, would you like to go? Thanks, Izumi. Um, what I was going to suggest was actually in relation to publishing two separate documents at separate time. Um, I'm wondering whether that could be confusing for the community uh, if we publish a version that um, before the final version, they might think that it's open for uh, discussions and comments again. Um, it seems to me that what we're trying to achieve is to let the community know what is what are the changes that we've made since the second draft that is substantive and what is just editorial. Um, perhaps what we could do is publish a red line um, editorial document only, which is the first draft that we're talking about, and then a second red line that shows the changes uh, the substantive changes, um, and that way it's not confusing about the different timing for different drafts. But that's just my kind of comment on that. Thank you, Craig. Um, I I seem to be losing a part of the sound, but um, I uh, from what I caught, I think your observation all uh, makes sense to me, and that's why I wanted to confirm if we wanted to uh, um, make an, a separate announcement. And um, so I see um, Alan. Um, so Alan, we have a comment related to this. Then I'll uh, please go. Yes, thanks. Um, so I think I understood Craig is saying that we should we we could publish a, a document now with only editorial changes and no substantive changes. And uh, I, I agree. I would like to do that. However, that's a little difficult because. In this editing process, which I thought was supposed to be focused on editorial changes, uh, some substantive changes have crept in, and so we will need to identify them and revert them. Alternatively, we could decide not to publish right now and wait until we've finished the rest of the editing. Um, so just to clarify um, to Alan's point, um, is this an addition to the suggestion from uh, Paul Wilson, or um, if that if this is just uh, related to suggestions from Paul Wilson, then I think um, the current suggestion is that um, we just uh, incorporate the points that are being listed by Nurani, and then uh, we revert back all the other points. 
So I see a comment from Michael on the chat. To the extent with regard to Paul Wilson's uh, changes that people see, what is not controversial, we can keep in, um, we can revert the other changes. But that may be another approach. Um, but um, I think um, let's stick to our initial um, intention. So um, we simply want to um, show to the community um, clearly what were simply editorial changes that is not substantive, so that uh, any of the substantive changes would be um, highlighted in a, in a separate version and people are able to confirm what points uh, were made on the substantive changes. So um, I think that that is the purpose of um, this editorial uh, incorporation. And Alan is not sure if um, whether all substantive changes were from Paul. Okay. So that may um, put us in a little bit of um, difficult position, and I, I think it's, it's a little bit difficult to go through each of them and identify whether um, they are substantive or not. Um, um, so, um, Alan, just to understand um, from what, what, it, what, what you recall as substantive changes, you mean substantive changes in the use of um, some language, or um, it, it seems to be implied some changes in, in what's being described? Uh, Izumi, I don't have the uh, red line version in front of me right now. I only have the uh, clean version, um, and I didn't make notes about which changes I thought were substantive and which changes I thought were purely editorial. But it, you know, it took me an hour or two to go through all the changes, and it, just while I was doing that, it struck me that several of them were not purely editorial. And uh, okay, because of that, I think it's going to be difficult for us to publish a document which has no substantive changes at all. And uh, so I see there's a comment from Craig in the chat, which I agree with. Um, it's difficult to separate the changes into substantive and editorial. And uh, so perhaps we should just not publish this draft and uh, continue working until we have a more final version which we can publish. Thank you, Alan. And I think Craig's suggestion makes sense to me as well. So um, I think not to try to um, you know, work on editorial changes only. So we, we just incorporate all these um, edits and uh, substantive changes and we publish as the final draft. So. Um, Um, if there's no other comments related to this. Um, well, Nurani, I would like to actually share um, our conclusion um, about the general direction. Um, so we initially planned to publish just the editorial um, version, and then as the next step, um, um, publish a version um, uh, to be submitted to the ICG, um, which was substantive changes, so that people are able to identify what substantive changes are being made, uh, different from purely editorial. But observation from Alan is that it's not just with Paul Wilson's draft, but there were a couple of um, points that were incorporated in the draft that is being worked by Alan and um, uh, Bill and Michael. So it's, it's a little bit difficult to distinguish and um, substantive and editorial. It's, it's sort of mixed in the current version, and it's not just related to Paul Wilson's um, points. So um, right, so you lost me after able to identify substantive changes. So um, what I was saying was that um, we initially um, plan to separate the two drafts, and um, but we, we just simply incorporate all changes in the final version, whether it's purely editorial or whether it's substantive. We're not going to make a distinction about that. So we just simply uh, publish the version that is uh, incorporating all the changes instead of trying to 
or distinguish between editorial and substantive because it, um, it, some of the uh, changes that are being incorporated are already substantive and it, this is not just uh, related to uh, Paul Wilson's comment. So, um, I see a chat um, from Paul. Yes, I think the time is too, uh, too short to do two versions. So I think let's just uh, continue and then um, the, I think it's really helpful that we actually did this because we, we do actually have something to build on which is not related to the suggested changes um, or the issues being discussed on the IANA list. So I think it's good that as the Chris team we first confirm uh, what are the changes being made um, at this stage and then um, add, uh, the, the, um, add this um, further um, text suggestions based on the issues that are being raised on the global list. Yes, Anura, um, you're right. So we, 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 our conclusion is not to publish a temporary draft. We just simply incorporate all changes and, um, and we, we, um, this is to be submitted to the ICG. That's the basic idea. So, um, if that is clear to everybody, um, I would like to reconfirm what we will do with Paul Wilson's suggested changes. So the initial um, reason that was raised was um, some of the changes that are being suggested by Paul is uh, maybe substantive, and uh, we might want to confirm uh, with the Chris team uh, members. So um, let me double check um, whether um, given the conclusion that we in incorporate all um, changes, whether substantive or not, in the, uh, and then we published it, it in one timing rather than separating, do people still think that we should revert back on um, some of those uh, suggestions um, and um, purely just stick to the lists um, that are being, uh, um, the points that are being listed by Nurani? Or we simply just uh, circulate the draft and people feel like um, this part needs to be changed, then people can simply comment. Uh, yes, Narani, please. Tutorial changes. I'll keep an eye on the chat. So let me know if you can't hear me. Uh, Uh, changes. My list uh, is a list of changes that I think are simply editorial and uh, doesn't need any discussion. Um, so I, I think if people look at those uh, and are comfortable with those, we can just simply incorporate them. You can't hear me. No, it's no running. Um, I, I'm sorry, we're, we're having this uh, audio problem somehow. So, um, yes, I, I get your point. That um, so regarding the uh, regarding the suggestions from Paul Wilson, um, um, we can incorporate the list that you have made, which were related to the points that um, it's not controversial, and we can simply incorporate. 
Oh yes, uh, I I have the same situation, Paul. Um, so um, so I think that's um, I I don't think this is a controversial suggestion at all. So we can simply incorporate all um all the points that Nuani has listed um and in in the draft. And the next question I would have is how about the other suggestions um that are made by uh, Paul Wilson. And so there are two options. One is um, go ahead. Um, I think um, um, Alan has it, was it Alan? Um, I think she has shared the the, uh, the latest draft or, um, that has been uh, worked on by Michael and uh, Bill. So if people find any part that is um, they don't agree, then we we revert back. But if not, we can uh, keep the suggested uh, changes from Paul Wilson. So if there's any one person who who uh, on the Chris team who who raises that this sentence should not be um, um, incorporated or looks strange, then um, it should be reverted back to their um, and we don't incorporate the change from Paul Wilson. Another option is that we simply just uh, revert back all the um, suggested changes from Paul Wilson that has not been listed on Nirani's email. Yeah, thank you, Nirani. Um, so uh, let me read this out. So the question is what we want to do with the rest of Paul Wilson's suggestions that slide. And um, so happy to quickly review them. And if there's quick agreement on the suggestion, we can accept it. And if we don't agree, anything that we don't agree, then um, we don't have to discuss it further. Yes, um, that's exactly consistent with my suggestion. So let's work in um, our poll. Paul, um, I think you have hand up. So let's go to Paul. Sorry, I, now that you've just stated that, Azimia, I agree with that way forward. I do agree with that way forward. Okay, great. Um, and um, so I see Alan supports um, Nirani's suggestion, agree with Nirani's way, John as well, and I think that is um, consistent with what I intended to suggest as well. So um, thank you, Nirani, and also for listing all the um, all the points that is uh, it looks agreeable. Thank you very much. So um so I initially intended to confirm about the timeline to work for the editorial version, but we don't have to discuss this anymore now that we've agreed to just simply um, uh, um publish a single draft um, without uh, trying to do editorial version. So um let's go on to confirm the status of um editorial suggest um not editorial, sorry, um the text suggestions that are being made since the last call based on the issues that are being raised on the global list. So it's listed, um, three of them are listed here. Um, first is community review on SLA, and I think Andre, um, uh, he's not here, he's not joining the call yet. But um, So I'd like to come back when Andre is back. I think there's a general agreement about his text suggestion. I observed this on the mailing list. So, um, I think we, we can incorporate this unless anybody feels um, any um, concerns. And then um, on the review committee, I think there's a, um, a general agreement on, on the version that I sent with um, reflecting the change that has been suggested by uh, Narani. So, um, and I'm not seeing any further comments on this. And then on the contract fee, um, I do actually want to um, discuss this when Andre is here, but um, so I, I sent his text suggestion, and Andre has uh, shared this uh, more simple, simplified uh, version, saying that um, the contract fee should be uh, based on cost recovery basis. Um, and so th this is more simple, and this is supported by our uh, Paul and Nurani. And um, if everybody agrees, I am happy with this, and just want to double check whether we want to explicitly say that um, this, um, the contract fee should be a decision uh, made between the IANA service operator and the RIRs. I, I want to confirm about uh, this point. Um, and if it's really obvious and doesn't need to be stated, I'm, I'm happy not to um, 
describe it, but I'm observing some um, comments on the mailing list um, uh, about this, that we have to be specific about the cost and things like this. So I was just wondering that it may be safe to, um, uh, to clearly state this. So um, does anybody have any comments about this? I do want to do a recap one. Andre is back. But um, on the contract fees, does anybody um, have any comments? So um, do people, does anybody feel that it is important that we clearly state that uh, this is the decision to be made um, between the IANA service operator and the RIRs? Or, um, it seems there's no um, comment. So, so Paul has said that um, he likes the way Andre has stated. So Andre's text is okay. So I think people generally think that it's okay not to um, uh, describe um, that this is um, something to the, um, the decision to be made between um, the INR service operator and the RIRs. Okay, so I think everybody agrees with Andre's text. So let's um, uh, move forward based on Andre's text. So, um, so uh, related to these points um, that I, we've um, confirmed in five, I'd like to discuss in agenda item seven about um, the schedule and timeline. But uh, before we do this, I'd like to move to agenda item six, which is uh, Christine's position for additional issues that are being um, posted on the global list. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I, I'm not seeing anything substantial, actually. Um, but uh, just to quickly confirm, um, uh, um, I'd like to uh, quickly confirm um, about our general position. So the first point is um, there's a suggestion to continue discussions in um, RIR meetings um, even after we submit this, uh, this proposal to the ICG. And um, well, I, I, don't, I, I don't think this is something suggested to incorporate in our, our proposal and simply just uh, sharing the idea. So um, unless people feel strongly that we have to um, say something against this or express concerns, I think it's natural assumption that um, um, each of the RIR region will f facilitate the way for um, discussions on this topic as we have done for in developing the proposal. Is this a fair observation? Yep. Uh, thank you, John, for agreeing. So, and I'm not sharing any comments. So let's move on um, to B or uh, six B. So um, I think um, there's another um, point um, on IPR. So there's a description in our uh, section three A two, which is the draft that Andre has um, has um, developed on um, the specific IPR um, consideration related to. Um, to the IANA.org registry and uh, the, the uh, registration of data. And then um, he seems to be observing inconsistency uh, in description in um, section 3A3 um, and um, 3. <laughs> um, so this is, I think, it's, it's part of the principle that is uh, listed as the, um, the, IAN, the SLA. Um, and I think the first part says that this um, IPR should be delegated, um, the IPR related to IANA.org should be delegated to uh, IETF Trust. And then on the other hand, the, the later section says that this um, IPR related um, 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 rights will be uh, delegated to the RIRs. And he was wondering if we, we may not be talking about the same thing, but it may it looks as though it's uh, it's contradicting and maybe worth clarifying. So I see a hand from Alan. Right. Um, I, I think it's two separate issues. Um, we said that the we thought that the trademarks the, the IETF trademark and IETF.org should should 
be uh, transferred to some sort of neutral place. And we said that the rights to the data should be in the public domain. It is two different things, and we are using different words to speak about them. Uh, so I'm not really sure what the inconsistency is. Uh, maybe we just need to clarify the wording. Oh, thank you, Alan. So I, I agree with you that there's no inconsistency in Section 3A2 on itself. It, it describes um, two different um, elements. But the, um, what's being pointed out is what's described in this um, 3A2, which is the part that Andre and I think you have also um, given a lot of contribution. And then the part that um, we list the uh, um, SLA elements um, in, uh, as a part of our Section 3.3, 3, um, the part that Paul and Nurani has worked. And I think there's a mention about any IPR will be um, transfer to RIR, so I think something like that that does not mention IETF trust. And he seems to be thinking that this may not be clear and looks as though it's contradicting, so it's uh, worth clarifying. So uh, my suggestion is maybe we can compare the text um, and in parallel in a single email and um, confirm uh, among us on the mailing list whether they contradict and any additional description will be helpful in not making it sound contradictory. Would this sound, uh, does that sound reasonable? Okay, thank you. So, um, so I'll do that. Um, and so, six, um, let's move on to 6 3. So, I see a post from Pinda Wong. Um, it's not very clear to me what his intention is, but I, he seemed to be um, arguing in, in the previous email, um, trying to clarify whether the contract is an absolute must. And um, I see some new ones that you may not be so comfortable with the format of the contract and uh, things like that, but um, does anybody have a better interpretation or understanding about his... his uh, Point. And I'm also not sure if we seriously want this point to be um, incorporated. Okay, uh, thank you, Craig. So he's just Pinder is just thinking out loud, so we don't have to. Um, he's not seeking for response. Thank you for clarifying this. Thanks. So, um, so I think we don't have to worry about this. Um, so, um, and then there's further input about um, cost um, from I think dormitory. Um, that we should actually clearly state what uh, the cost is. And um, so I think we, we have already addressed this in um, Andre's um, draft on contract fee that we, while we don't actually um, write the actual specific amount, we, we do actually state that it will be based on cost recovery. And I think that would be a, a reasonable approach. And he also seems to be mentioning he has some concerns about the IANA staff, but I, I think it's just not a, a main point that he wanted to address. That's my understanding, at least. And so that's my observation of the comments that are being um, made uh, on the list. Oh, I think there's a comment uh, from Nick Hillard, um, which I actually um, replied already uh, on the email based on my understanding. And I, I felt that all the questions that he asked is um, based on what we have already um, discussed on uh, within the Chris team. So I just, um, since oh, we were, I wanted to make a comment uh, on the list that we'll be closing all comments, I just uh, sent out my response to Nick. So um, unless anybody have anything to raise related to this, I think we, we have covered on um, major points um, that are being raised. And I, I, I would like to confirm that um, except for 6B, um, which may potentially need some text changes, there's nothing else that needs uh, text changes. Thank you, Narani, for this uh, comment. Um, so um, that's the status of issues. And um, the next thing that I would like to um, to address related to this is that we, we haven't actually produced any issues of status list um, after the second version. And I do want to do this um, when we actually publish um, the final draft so that the community knows what are the points that we incorporated. Um, 
So I do want to ask for, um, again, our volunteer, um, um, anybody who is um, able to help me work on this. So I'll certainly give input and help on um, help, but I think um, in filling out some of the details, I do need um, help from others because I do want to look at the general stages of how a work is, not just to concentrate on, on updating the issues list only. Um, so if there's no volunteer at this stage, um, maybe I'll come back to this or confirm on the mailing list. Um, and then uh, let's move on to um, agenda item number seven. So timeline on how we work on the final, final submission and um, schedule and who to do what. So um, I sent this um, timeline of the schedule on the um, on the Christie mailing list, and um, I actually gave a little bit of like buffer time, so I don't know if it's possible to show it here. Um, should I send it to, um, to confirm with the NL Secretariat? If I send um, what I sent to the Christie mailing list to the NL Secretariat mailing list, um, would you be able to show that on on the screen? Let me just uh, do this, but I'm actually. Um, um, out of the, the VPN connection, so let me just access to this. And um, so while I do this, or somebody is able to uh, send this out, um, let me just share the basic concept of my suggestion. So um, in the last uh, uh, second draft, we actually had a bit of uh, confusion at the last minute um, because we had multiple suggestions about the same part. So what I want to uh, do is, um, for each section, we, we assign like a, a, um, a person who would work on incorporating um, text suggestions um, per section. And uh, my current suggestion is to keep the same person who has worked on each section um, at the second draft so that um, we have uh, some continuity and consistency um, from the previous um, work. So um, so the basic step is, let me just uh, forward this. I think I have forwarded it um, to the NRO Secretariat. Uh, mailing list. And um, So the basic idea is that, um, for example, anybody is uh, able to send text suggestions. So now Andre and myself are working on text suggestions. And then uh, we ask for feedback from Chris members about the text suggestions. And then when, when we incorporate all the uh, comments, I think it might be useful for um, a person who has been working for each section to send uh, Michael the text suggestion or on the section that need, needed any changes. Um, and then uh, in the second phase, people will be um, giving comments to this text uh, suggestion sent from the person who is responsible for this uh, section rather than uh, people coming up with different drafts. So th that's my initial um, idea. But uh, since we're not having that many um, changes uh, this time, I, I don't know if this is, uh, I'm just over, overly complicating things. So I'm also happy to work on a more uh, simplified um, scheme, in, uh, given that we don't have that many um, changes to make. Okay, simplify. Alan. 
Yeah, I, I don't think we need to funnel suggestions through a different person for each section. I think we should rather um, have anybody propose suggestions on the list. Uh, let's get uh, quick confirmation from others if they agree. And then um, the document editor, I suppose that's still um, Andre, can uh, incorporate them all and uh, send new versions of the draft to us, uh, preferably as often as possible. Okay, noted. And I, I'm seeing most people on. Um, thank you. Oh, Lauriana, thank you very much. I'm, I'm sorry for sharing this now. And um, I'm seeing most people supporting this uh, simple way of, of working instead of um, trying to have these people responsible. So I think um, since we just have myself and Andre on the text suggestions, uh, we can simply confirm uh, with Michael once we, we seem to have um, uh, ended uh, receiving all this um, or the comments, and then I think Michael can incorporate um, this on the draft. Um, does that sound workable to you, Michael? Agreed. Um, thank you, Michael. And um, and then I'd like to um, confirm about the general timeline on on submitting the draft. Um, my current um, plan is we I want uh, to just I. My understanding is there's no a specific time that is listed on the ICG proposal. So um, we can simply send it um, before uh, UTC 2359. That's my understanding. But if we target this, this might be um, um, if we have any last minute um, unexpected things, uh, we won't have any buffer time. So uh, I would like to give a, a a few hours of buffer time for this, and um, so maybe try to target it um, a few hours before, for example, UTC 18 or something like that, um, so that we would have any um, time to address this in case we, we do have last minute unexpected um, uh, changes. So thank you, Michael, for accommodating. Um, uh, to not uh, agreeing with this uh, general direction, and um, so maybe my um, my timeline can be uh, much more simple um, from what I sent. So I will try to um, to send a much more simple timeline uh, based on this. So we first target around UTC 18, and then. Um, try to break down the comment period for people and then my call to actually reincorporate comments and things like this. So um so I'll send this on the on the Chris T mail list. So can we get uh, another draft early tomorrow? Um is that a confirmation um to to Michael? Oh, Alan, I, I'm seeing your chat. Alan, please. Okay, yeah, I think I need to speak about that. Um, we're making text suggestions, and and we're people often agree with other people's suggestions, and then that'll get incorporated into a document. Now, my concern is that we'll need some time to review that combined document, like at least for another day. So I'd, I'd like to get our uh, changes done as soon as possible, like in the next uh, 12 to 18 hours. And uh, then perhaps we can get another draft to discuss um, by tomorrow morning, so that when we have our call at this time tomorrow, um, we have another revision of the document that we can be looking at. That sounds like a good uh, suggestion, um, Alan. That makes sense to me. And um, so, is there any further work that needs to be done um, in addition to the draft that you have shared um, on the Christine list? Um, If not, then maybe we can um, start receiving comments on um, to the draft that has been also repeat again on oh, sure. So um I think um Alan was it Alan or Bill, I can't remember. Um somebody has sent on the 
the um, the draft of the proposal that has incorporated some of the editorial and some substantial um, changes, but it does not include um, the the text suggestions that I've listed in agenda item number five. So except for these, it's incorporating all the um, the comments that are made on on the uh, either on the Christie mailing list or the I am um, mailing list. So is there any additional work that you, um, Alan? Um, Bill and Michael has to work on this draft, or is this ready for for comments? And uh, no, I, I believe we've finished what we set out to do. Um, I made some changes. Michael made some changes. Bill made some changes, and then the version which I sent to the list, um, I actually it was email from Bill, which I bounced to the mailing list. So you might see Bill's name in the in the from field, but my name in the envelope. Um, that contains the, the latest draft from the three of us. And um, I think we should be using that as the basis for any further discussion of uh, textual changes. We can also use it for discussion of Paul Wilson's changes and which parts should be kept and which parts should be reverted. Thank you, Alan, for clarifying this. So, um, so you're saying that this is ready to receive comments from the Chris team, including Paul Wilson's um, uh, suggestions. Oh, thank you, Michael, for asking this question. Are there any other changes the group wants to incorporate from this call before reviewing? Um, yes, that's a good point. And from the right. I will try to speak, uh, since I've been hearing you all uh, fairly clearly, I uh, hope you can hear me. Um, I am not, the, the latest version that was bound uh, to the list uh, by Alan, which was from Bill Woodcock, um, I'm not, I cannot see any track changes, so I'm not entirely sure of what changes have been incorporated and not, or not. Uh, and as noted, he's also changed the numbering, uh, which we all agree makes sense, but we agreed to stick to the original numbering set by the RFP. Um, so, I, to me, it's not entirely clear what what uh, changes, what, what this, what status this document has. Thank you, Nurani. So um, let's, um, uh, you reminded me, we have to confirm about the number we see. So let's uh, confirm about this. And then um, once we do this, um, maybe I suggest, um, maybe Michael can help us um, incorporate whatever the conclusion that we have, and then um, circulate the red line and the clean version to, to the list. Um, would that be possible, Michael? And would that sound reasonable to everybody? Yes, I can try to um, I can try to make a red line of that, and then if we, I think that we've all agreed on the numbering thing, which I would just have to go back and redo the numbering, and then if there are any other changes, I guess that was the one big thing is before we all are ready to comment on a, you know kind of a baseline draft from which we are going to try to make the next version. Um, is there anything else that we would like to be included in this. I know that we talked about a few things on this call with some proposed text. Um, I'm just trying to make it as efficient as possible so that there aren't as many drafts running back and forth. Um, but I do absolutely agree that the red line, that was one of my um, concerns too, is when we got the document uh, from Bill, I noticed uh, that there were a ton of changes that um, were not reflected. So uh, I, can, I can try to create that red line. It may be a little bit confusing, but I'll do my best on that one. Thank you very much, Michael. That sounds very helpful. And just to confirm that uh, what we agreed about uh, numbering, um, uh, my understanding is that we um, people feel we should be consistent with the numbering scheme in the RFP. Um, so that's what uh, we've agreed on. That's, that's my understanding. But um, if this is diff uh, um, anything different from others, um, please uh, let me know. And um, and Alan is saying let's add add other things later. Yes. 
So I think, um, Alan, I noticed that you actually um, has, uh, created another document that is uh, related to the changes you felt was a little bit substantial. So um, perhaps maybe we can incorporate this um, in the later stage when we when we add um, other um, text suggestions related to the items listed here. Um, because we want to um, hear feedback from um, Chris team members about um, your tech uh, or your suggestion. Would that sound reasonable to um, you, Alan, and everybody? Okay, from Alan, and I see uh, the suggestion from um, Nurani. Oh, so Alan, um, um, so I see um, a comment from Nurani. So let's work on this basic document, which will be sent from Michael with um with the changes uh, the red line uh, version um, of the changes that they made and um also to include the list of editorial comments by Paul Wilson including consistent use of terms could that be done um so um I so let me confirm with Michael if that could be done um which may be already incorporated uh, so let me confirm Yes, I believe that um, we already uh, incorporated what Paul Wilson had suggested, but I, I can see that that probably wasn't the clearest since it wasn't in red line. So that should come up in the in the red line document. But as the draft stands right now, it does incorporate what Paul Wilson had suggested. And just one thing to note, and I know that um, Zumi and I talked about this earlier, the uh, with the document revisions that incorporated comments from the list as as you identified and I know that there's a list of people we said before some of those actually conflicted um, so for example I guess Paul had suggested one change that um, that kind of made one of my changes moot the um, the whole point of the uh, reference to a new contract that I had sent to the list earlier so those are a couple things like that not too many so um, so what it has right now is all of what Paul had suggested, and then I think from here we can decide if there's anything that we need to back out. Thank you, Michael, for highlighting this. And I see a comment from Alan. So, um, so it's not incorporate non-controversial changes from Paul Wilson. Maybe we want controversial changes from Paul Wilson. Oh, I think he was clarifying something. Oh, Alan. So, um. So I think, um, the, I, you, Michael, you have already highlighted uh, in the email about um, the changes that uh, seem to be conflicting. And uh, so um, people, please comment on which one makes sense. And if there's any agree disagreement about Paul Wilson's suggestion uh, from any member of Chris' team, then we just simply don't incorporate it. So I think this, uh, I hope this uh, conclusion is clear and agreed. Um, uh, Nirani, I see your hand. Thank you, and, and uh, great. Thank you for the explanations as well, Michael. Um, really appreciate it. Um, again, because we're at the very end of the process, I very much appreciate Bill uh, offering to help, but um, I find it confusing since he uh, has incorporated changes that we haven't, in numbering, for example, that we haven't agreed on. on and uh, could I suggest that uh, we go back to one person holding the pen. I have felt um, uh, very comfortable with the way uh, Michael has handled that, and it's been very clear all the way uh, it, along each step of the process what changes have been made or not. This, we don't have that many changes uh, left to make now. Um, would it be acceptable to Michael, first of all, but to others as well, that uh, we give him the pen and any changes that are incorporated get sent to him so that we can see what changes are made each step along the way. 
Uh, and also, like Alan said, we need to have uh, make sure that we have enough time to review the final document so we know what we are signing off on. Thank you. Thank you. And I see um, Paul agreeing with the Nirani, and um, so that's um, consistent with my understanding as well, um, unless it um, has uh, causes any issues for Michael. So I think Craig is uh, agreeing. I'm happy to do this, uh, Michael. So thank you for confirming this. I think everybody is agreeing with Nirani's suggestion, and um, thank you for clarifying and confirming this point. So I think it's, it's good to um, have a single pen, uh, Michael. And thank you, Michael, for agreeing um, to work on this. I know it has been a lot of work. Um, so I think we've covered um, all the major points um, that we wanted to discuss today. And since Andre has joined, um, let me just uh, give a, uh, have a brief recap summary so that um, uh, we, we know about the next step. Yes, Michael is a little star. Yes, I agree, Paul. So um, we've we've agreed on um, editorial suggestions that are being sent. Um, um, not not the editorial. The um, on agenda item number five, we've um, I think we have basic agreement on the the text suggestions on each of the points listed in A B C community review S L A review committee and regarding contract fee. There's agreement to um, to incorporate Andre's draft, and then um, what we do, um, and then um, what we do is first um, we we give uh, feedback to the what's called editorial suggestions, but it's actually incorporating some substantive changes as well, and this will be circulated by Michael on um, the clean version and the red line version, so uh, people should uh, start um, uh, commenting on this. But this version has still has not incorporated um, the text uh, suggestion in agenda item um, five and another additional um, changes that is being suggested by Alan. So we, after we go through all the feedback and incorporate the changes, we actually also um, incorporate this text suggestion uh, from both Alan and what's listed in 5A um, in, the, in the second version. And um, so that's basically the way forward. And we have agreed not to do a separate phase for editorial and the final because um, for two reasons. One, we're, we're too short of time. And then some of the editorial suggestions are actually uh, incorporate substantive changes. So it's very distinct and difficult to distinguish between editorial and not. And we, and we may confuse people by publishing editorial suggestions um, in, in a phase after we close it on um, the comments. So that's the conclusion of this meeting. And um, I hope this is clear. And we are over on time, but um, Andre, since you've joined, um, if you have any um, um, strong question that you would like to ask um, regarding this conclusion, I, I think we can take one or two from you. I'm not, um, no question. Okay, um, thank you, Andre. So then um, I'll close the meeting and uh, our next uh, meeting will is scheduled tomorrow again. So hopefully we'll be able to um, receive as much comment as possible on the, um, on the um, version that is to be sent from Michael before the call. So that if there's any controversial point that needs to be discussed, um, we can uh, discuss this uh, at the call tomorrow. And oh, sure, Paul, you want to have a question? Hi there. I'm sorry because my 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 uh, uh, audio has kind of gone in and out. I just want to make sure I'm clear on on, on, the, on this one point. If I can ask a question. So the version, Michael, that that you've sent out now, it has included all of Paul Wilson's changes. Is that correct? And we're supposed to look at them and uh, look through Paul's changes and see what we don't like, and that's what we would send to the list. Is that correct? That's that's what I'm suggested. happy. I'm happy because I'm you know although I just wanted to clarify, and I will say this on the list when this comes around. I did agree with 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 the points Narani made. Um, I commented on those. 
And then I looked and I agreed with the plan B that you came up with, assuming that, whoa, let's just be careful here, only because I was skeptical of the time, not because I was disagreeing with what, what Paul had put in there. In fact, I think that Paul's contribution, however late, um, is, is very good. And I think a lot of his parts are very spot on. So um, I will go through them again uh, and, and see. But I really didn't see anything that I, I would see as controversial myself. But I would like to review them again. I'm just happy to know where we stand. Thank you for this clarification, Paul, and I hope this is clear to everybody. And I do recommend um, Andre and Alan, who has worked on, on, on the part that describes about overlap um, in section one. Uh, he, he, he did make quite a lot of um, changes in that part, so maybe you want to make sure that um, it doesn't remove anything that you actually wanted to incorporate. But that's just one example, and I recommend uh, everybody to look at the whole section. So um, thank you, everybody, um, and um, so we'll talk to you all again um, tomorrow. You yeah, do you mean? sure. Um, Alan, yeah, you wanted to say something. You know, I, I, I wonder if, if, if Michael caught this, because I, it just, we'll just save us a moment on the list, I think. We went through in Narani's bit or that she brought up, and some of us commented on things we didn't want to have in there. For instance, association, we rather would have kept as organization. We've had agreement on those things. Are those going to be reflected in the document, the agreements that have come onto the CRISP list? Would those be taken already as bits we don't want to include from Paul's stuff? Because we have had some agreement there online. I think that sounds reasonable. And if Michael needs clarification on what's being agreed and what's not, I can, I'm happy to uh, clarify on, on the mailing list so that Michael is clear on um, what, what to incorporate and also clear to um, all Chris team members on what's being agreed. Okay, that's good. I'm um, running. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, so I realized that I misinterpreted what uh, the status of the document was. Uh, before, so uh, I understand that the current document, so the one that Bill has sent out, has incorporated all of Paul Wilson's changes. I'm not sure if I'm completely comfortable with that. Uh, not necessarily because I think there was anything um, very controversial with his changes, but he, there, there are a few things. He's changing language that we have agreed on, for example, on an added data. Uh, there's other language which I think uh, mirrors the ITF proposal, but I might be wrong here. But where we have chosen specific wording for specific reasons, and I'm not sure if all those uh, all those changes should just be accepted without us making a con conscious, sorry, conscious decision about it. Um, I'm not saying that I think any of of Paul Wilson's changes are radically, um, uh, yeah, that they're controversial or wrong or insane, <laughs> but uh, some of them do uh, imply changes in substance, to say minimal change instead of no change, for example, to change wording uh, that we have on text that we've tossed back and forth. Um, I would be a lot more co comfortable if we keep the text we have and consciously agree to accept um, bits of text suggested. I'm really sorry if I'm making it uh, difficult for people, but I'm, I'm very, very conscious of spreading carefully here at the very end of the process. Um, yes, but just to clarify the status, um, now the, the current document that we have, it's incorporated all of Paul Wilson's changes. And um, just to be clear on what you're saying, Nirani, the, the idea is that we can take a look and then all the points that you actually raised, is, I think it's very valid that if Paul has um, suggested changes to the, do to the wording that we have already um, uh, agreed on, then we should actually revert back the changes. So 
So that's, that's the suggestion of a way to move forward. Um, but are you saying that we should um, actually revert back all the changes that have been incorporated and then we just add on the ones that we, we consciously agree? So, so the initial um, agreement uh, in the call today was um, we, we reviewed the current text and um, if anybody, um, any member of the Chris team is uncomfortable with any of the, um, the suggested changes from Paul Wilson or, or anybody else actually, um, if there's any one single disagreement, we don't have time to discuss this. We just simply don't uh, incorporate this, um, this um, uh, um, changes to the text suggestion. So that's, current, that's what um, we have um, agreed at the call so far. And I just want to be clear on um, whether you, rather, you, you disagree with this and you rather um, put back all the changes um, except for the ones you listed and we just uh, consciously add the ones that we think is agreeable. Um, well, well, maybe uh, it will become clearer once we have a red line document, because uh, maybe that's what adds to the confusion at the moment. Uh, I, I think it would also be good to, in that red line document, see, see um, what changes are changes made <laughs> come from Paul's suggested changes. So they're not completely mixed up with any other editorial changes or anything else that we've agreed on. Uh, I realize that we, we, we don't have a lot of time. I'm also conscious of uh, making sure that we treat feedback uh, properly. I don't think we've accepted any other comments made from anyone else in the community um, in that way where we've had to consciously remove it. Uh, the way we've worked is that there have been uh, input, we've discussed it, and we've consciously added it. Uh, so I'm a little bit uncomfortable with changing this way of, of uh, working as it might look like we are not treating all input uh, equally. Uh, again, it's not because I have specific concerns about Paul Wilson's uh, comments, it's because I want to make sure that we follow proper process. Uh, but maybe once we have a red line document, it will be clearer and that will, the fog will lift and, and we can proceed with that. Thank you. Um, yes, I, I see your point, Nurani. But um, um, so um, regarding your first point on clarifying post changes, I think you're able to um, um, identify from um, the one that uh, Paul has sent. I think it actually shows the red, red line of the things that he suggested to change. So, and I think Michael will be um, sharing the red line version as well. So I think that, that will actually help you um, confirm what the changes have been made. And um, I think your point about the process and being fair to everybody, I think that's an important point. And um, my, my observation is that regarding a new issue being brought up, we actually make sure that um, we, we agree on the general position and we, we actually um, seek for consensus within the Chris team whether to incorporate or not. And I'm not sure if uh, Paul, Paul Wilson um, is making any, um, any new changes to, to um, the proposal. So I think if that is the case, then I think I agree with you, Nirani, that we should actually be explicit um, we first um, seek for Chris team's position on this before we, we incorporate uh, anything. So that's um, so it's, uh, you get a uh, we get a red line version with lots of different changes and so. Um, and on running. Hello, apologies for keeping everyone uh, on the call, especially as we're all getting very busy with our normal day job. Um, well, my this is my concern because I, I now we have a new document. To me, it's not very clear what changes has has uh, have been made or not. Uh, I very much appreciate Michael offering to send a red line document, but even with the red line one, if it's not clear what, what, where these changes come from, if those are bills, personal editorial changes, 
if some of them are pulls changes, some of them are changes that we have agreed on on a teleconference or on a list. It makes it very hard to make a decision when reviewing it whether to accept or reject that change. Even if a change makes sense to me, we might choose to reject it simply because we had an agreed position before. I might like, personally, I might like that particular wording, but that is not what should uh, guide me in making a decision on whether or not to accept it or reject it. I think what should guide us is the language that we have agreed on should stay unless we agree on new language. So my concern is that unless we know the source of these changes, it is very hard to, to um, evaluate the right way forward. Thank you. Okay, I understood your point, Nirani. So if the, the source of the change is from, um, the, um, based on the Christine's um, agreed um, editorial changes, then you feel that it's okay to incorporate. But if it just comes from a community member, then um, even if you agree with the content of the changes, then you don't feel comfortable that we we accept this change. Um, is that well? Unless I agree that that change should be made, of course. But but uh, if if someone suggests to change minimal change to no change, for example, personally I might like that. But maybe there was a reason we chose the wording minimal change. Maybe there was wording based on community input or based on discussions in this group. And then we shouldn't just, based on my personal preference, say, yeah, that makes sense to me, let's accept it. I think we, we have to be very, very careful that the changes we're making now are not um, contradictory to any other previous input or decisions we've made. Uh, so if we make changes, then Substantive changes, though, should be agreed on by the group. Thank you. I see hand from um, Alan and uh, Michael. So, Alan. Right. Um, so, I'm not certain, but I think that the changes Bill made were were almost all um, copy editing and formatting. I'm not sure whether he incorporated change from anybody else. Um, I, it's my suspicion that he did not. And uh, so um, it, it's a little hard to review the document with, with hundreds of copy editing changes and uh, several changes arising from suggestions from the community. Um, I would suggest that we could try reviewing a, a document just before that, uh, which was not shared with the list, was only shared between me, Bill, and Michael, um, which incorporated changes that Michael and I had made based on uh, community input and things which had been shared on the list, but which does not include Bill's copy editing. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would suggest that we possibly look at that one as a basis for further discussion. That sounds reasonable, Alan, and perhaps um, if Bill feels strongly about uh, incorporating those changes, it might be better for us to review the red, red line version and then confirm if we agree with the changes. Um, so please, oh, let's go to uh, Michael. Yes, Alan, actually you took the, uh, you took the words out of my mouth, it seems, and uh, I was thinking along the same lines. Uh, so there was a document that uh, I created that had Alan's uh, edits as well as mine. Um, I combined our two into one, and I had made a clean version and a red line version, and then had forwarded that on to Alan and Bill and myself. And Bill took that and did a lot of the copy edit changes, which I think the document looks a lot cleaner now the way it is, but of course there are some issues that we need to address, such as the numbering and everything else. If I circulate the red line that I had done before Bill's changes, we can ask, I guess that would be a good starting point because we could ask Bill if there were any substantive changes other than the copy editing. I wasn't sure if he had any um, of his own comments. I know that Alan and I had taken up uh, some of the community feedback, but I know that um, I didn't know if Bill had put any substantive changes or anything else that text that he had other than the copy editing. But um, I can circulate that red line in clean version, and the only question I have with that is, 
with that version, it is actually a lot easier for me to back out Paul's changes if we need to, because I did it in a dot docx uh, redline. So I could go through and look at Paul's changes and just reject those, um, reject the edits that I made. I don't want to over confuse things and everything else, and that's why I want to pose that to the group. But I can circulate that document, and that might be a little bit easier to digest for everybody. And then, um, and then we can also confirm with Bill. I know that he's on a different time zone too, so he's he's probably just uh, waking up right now. Um, we can confirm with him on the other changes that he may have incorporated. But perhaps that would give something that uh, the group can look at in the short term more immediately, and then um, we can go from there. That's just my uh, my two cents on that. Excellent. That sounds reasonable. And um, Ronnie, do you feel comfortable with this approach? I think the current version does include all the um, all the changes from Paul Wilson, um, not just the simple editorial ones, but it does um, show the red line um, of the changes that are being incorporated. So um, I see a comment from um, Narani saying that would be very helpful. So um, I, um, if everybody is happy with this uh, way forward, um, then let's just uh, work on this. Uh, so without the version, without incorporating those changes. And from Andre. I'm sorry. Uh, I just uh, wanted to be sure that we're all on the same page. So what is the next step? We'll get a document red line with only changes introduced by Michael that do not include Bill's changes and Paul Wilson changes. Is, is my understanding correct? Um, I think not. I think um, the only thing that doesn't incorporate in Michael's version to be sent is um, Bill's suggested changes. So it does include all other changes that, that is incorporating um, editorial or suggestions from the community, uh, including Paul Wilson as well. So that's going to be the version that um, Michael will be, will be circulating with the red line. Um, so, so that's, that's the current um, uh, st status. Um, I think that's that's the current uh, way that is. Um, so, to to um, reply to Andre's uh, question, all editorial and Paul Wilson's on substantive changes. Uh, yes, that's that's what it will be. Um, so it does show it will show on the red line on what the changes will be, but it will also include Paul Wilson's substantive changes. So we're missing Bill's uh, polishing lemma, right? And other than that, it's the kind of pre-final version. Exactly. Does that sound reasonable? Yes, thank you. I just wanted to clarify that. OK, thank you. Thank you for um, clearly um, confirming this point, which may have not been clear to others as well. And I see Paul um, agreeing that he, um, he can live with this and look through and see what you, what we think needs to be discussed and Ronnie also thinks that we can actually have active discussions about um, Paul Wilson's uh, substantive changes as well. So great. Um, so I, um, does anybody ha else have any further confirmation or questions about the way forward? Uh, we are over time, but I think it's more important that uh, we, we have no confusion about the status of the document which is to be circulated and the next steps. So, um, okay, so I'm not seeing any further um, comments. So just to be clear, the version that Michael will be sending, uh, which will be um, show the, uh, the red line, is including all the, um, the suggested changes from the community and also the change suggested from um, Alan. And it does not incorporate any changes um, um, that is being suggested by uh, Bill Woodcock, which we assume is mostly uh, like formatting changes. So um, that's what will be um, shared to the Christy mailing list from Michael. And um, I do very much welcome um, your confirmation and comments on Paul Wilson's uh, or any other people's uh, substantive changes.
Okay, so um, Narani, you want to hear from other people's view on how to handle forwards and substantive changes? Sure. So, um, so let me put the question. Um, so, uh, what do pe people feel about um, how we handle forwards and um, substantive changes? So, um, do you agree to go ahead? Um, so, hand from Alan. Um, for me, the most important thing is that we discuss each of Paul Wilson's substantive changes and make a decision on it. Um, I don't really care whether it gets incorporated into the document now and then undone later, or whether it gets left out now and added in later. Either way, as long as we discuss it and make a decision, that would satisfy me. Thank you, Alan. Um, and anybody else have any comments um, about this? Especially if you have any concerns about uh, the suggested approach. So we, we do circulate the draft with Paul Wilson's um, substantive changes. But of course, you can um, uh, um, express a concern, or if, uh, we can still have discussions on the meaningness on um, any points that you, um, you you want to raise uh, related to Paul Wilson's substantive changes. So uh, I see a comment from Wando. We can discuss on email about the changes. We should appreciate effort, and if the changes get the consensus, we can adopt them. And Paul Randick is saying that we need a list of the substantive changes. Okay. Um, so, um, I think um, Michael wouldn't have time to list all these uh, substantive changes. So uh, maybe I will send a list of the substantive changes that have been listed on, uh, on Paul Wilson's draft. And you can um, double check with this list um, and what's being um, uh, incorporated. And if you um, so that it's easy for you to spot what substantive changes are made and you're able to raise um, concern or uh, opposition about um, incorporating any of the substantive changes. Would that work with everybody, um, including Nirani? Anybody have any concerns about this suggested approach? So the current document will incorporate, uh, will, will, will include um, all the substantive changes from Paul Wilson. But if there's any disagreement from any member of the Christian team about incorporating um, it, then we will remove it from, um, from, we will revert back the document. We will not incorporate and we will not go into discussions about whether or not agree. If any single um, concern is expressed, then um, we will just revert back. Um, and then I will list um, the substantive changes from um, Paul Wilson to the Christian mailing list so that people can um, can confirm and not miss um, any of the changes. So I see uh, okay from Nurani. Um, and um, anybody else have any comments or concerns about the way forward related to this? Okay. So. Thank you, uh, Michael, so for agreeing to send the draft red line as soon as possible. So this will include the substantive changes from Paul Wilson. Um, and um, thank you all very much. And I do appreciate Nirani for clearly um, confirming about this point. It's good that we we are explicitly explicit. Uh, about how we do, and um, uh, we are, we're being fair in terms of the process as well. So, um, if no other comments or questions, then I would like to close the meeting, and uh, and we'll continue working on the draft that will be circulated for Michael.
So thank you all for joining the call, including the observer. Thanks to NRO Secretariat. And um, talk to you again at the same time tomorrow.